Do you often find yourself in relationships where you are constantly chasing an avoidant partner? Or do you find you chase your partners away because of your attachment style? Do you struggle to have your needs met in your connections? And at the end of your relationships feel totally wrecked like you gave it your all and you're the one that's left heartbroken and alone? If this sounds like you and you'd like to know the three keys to healing the anxious attachment style and feeling secure in your relationships, then definitely keep watching. Hi, I'm Katya Morozova. I'm a personal and relationship coach and I help people overcome heartbreak. I help them understand themselves and their attachment styles and their partners using attachment theory. If that sounds helpful to you, then go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'm also the founder of katiamorozova.me, and if you'd like to book a coaching session with me, you can do so on my website. Let's quickly review the anxious attachment style and why they fall into the anxious avoidant trap. Anxious attachment is an attachment style which develops first in the caregiver-child relationship, and then the unresolved or untreated attachment wounds can then manifest in adult relationships. The anxious style can be characterized by an individual's fear of abandonment, difficulty with trusting the truth value of their partner's love and care for them, and this is often linked with low self-esteem, which I'll talk about later in this video, and difficulty expressing needs directly in a relationship. Now, people with this attachment style often feel insecure in relationships, leading to anxious behavior such as clinginess or obsessively checking up on their partner, or sometimes even covert anxiety expressed by hiding one's needs and secretly longing for them to be met instead. Anxious attachment develops when a caregiver is inconsistent in meeting the child's needs and or over involves the child in the caregiver's psychological world uh, at an inappropriate time in the child's development. To manage the distress this creates, the child learns to monitor, predict, and adapt to the caregiver's cycling of availability and misattunement. The child learns that in order to have their needs met, they need to focus on meeting the need of the caregiver rather than expressing their own spontaneous needs. When an anxious person enters into a relationship with someone who has an avoidant attachment style, it can create an anxious avoidant trap because the two styles fail to satisfy each other's needs for closeness and distance, which serves to recreate the cycle of unfulfillment that they experienced as children. And while this cycle is no longer satisfying, it still feels familiar and sometimes even magnetic when both partners are still unconscious of the draw to the recreation of their childhood patterns. The person with the anxious attachment style may become increasingly distressed when their need for connection or reassurance is not met. While the person with the avoidant attachment style may become overwhelmed by too much emotion from their partner and withdraw further. Now let's get into what it looks like to heal the anxious attachment style. Healing this style starts with self-awareness and understanding the dynamics at play. It involves learning to recognize triggers that may cause insecure feelings and responding in healthier ways than acting out or clinginess. Taking responsibility for one's own emotions also helps reduce feelings of resentment towards partners, which can help open up a dialogue about how both parties can make the relationship better. Another important step is learning how to communicate needs effectively without generating fear or defensiveness in the other person. And while the anxious attachment style can be difficult to manage, it is not impossible to heal. And in fact, there are three foundational keys that can help reduce anxiety around attachment and foster healthier relationships. 
relationships. The first step in healing an anxious attachment style is to become aware of your emotions and learn emotional regulation skills. Emotional regulation is the key to managing intense states when there is space or distance between you and your partner, which can often be triggering for the AP partner. It is also important to be able to see reality from an emotionally balanced place. When we're fueled by powerful emotions, our point of view becomes skewed. Our relationship and the world feels like a dangerous place. And when our relationship is viewed from this place, we can become doubting, mistrusting, and even hostile. This is not conducive to having a clear view of a situation or to having rational, productive conversations with our partner. Regulating our emotions not only helps us feel safe inside ourselves, but also helps us feel safe in our relationships and helps our partner to feel safe with us. One of the ways we start to hone emotional regulation skills is by taking responsibility for our emotions. This means recognizing that while we can't control what happens to us and what we feel, we can control how we choose to respond to the situation and to our emotions. This is important because once we realize this sense of agency over our emotional state, we can start to get curious about what's going on within us. We can start to be mindful of how our emotions affect our thoughts, our words, and actions. We can learn to identify the triggers that may cause us to feel a certain way and learn strategies to better understand and manage those feelings. The anxious style is often associated with low self-worth. The next step to healing this attachment style is working through this distorted image we may have of ourselves. Now, self-worth exists on a spectrum, so you may feel confident at work or in your friendships, but feel insecure in your romantic relationships. Or your self-worth may affect the image you have of yourself in more than one domain of life. Our self-worth is a large determinant of who we choose to be in a relationship with because it informs how valuable we feel we are or where we see a lack in ourselves. And our view of ourselves is a reflection of what we see in others. For instance, if we view ourselves as unattractive or unintelligent or broken, then we may not feel confident enough to go for someone who we find attractive, our intellectual equal, and someone who we view as whole. We may feel intimidated by partners like this and find ways to sabotage ourselves out of relationships that are actually healthy for us. Another example of this is if we don't believe that we are someone who deserves to have our emotional needs met and consistently, then it would make sense that we choose unavailable or avoidant partners that prove to us something that we already believe about ourselves. Working on our sense of worth helps us elevate our image of ourselves and as an extension, help us feel confident to go for the partners who affirm the beautiful things about us. And as we accept our weaknesses, we allow people in who will love us in spite of them. Finally, learning how to identify and express our needs is a big part of the journey for the anxious preoccupied partner. If the anxious partner historically thinks of themselves as inadequate, dependent, and emotionally fragile, then learning how to express our needs and desires in relationship is a revolutionary act that disproves our dated beliefs about ourselves and proves that we're willing to honor who we really are and what we truly want in life and relationships. Expressing our needs also helps us to gain clearer insight into what we truly want from a relationship and set boundaries that respect both parties involved. Expressing our needs allows us to take back control over how we are treated by significant others in our lives. 
and allows us to build stronger, more meaningful connections. While there are a number of things you can do to work on your anxious attachment style, working on building your emotional regulation skills, working on raising your self-esteem and holding yourself in a higher regard, and learning how to express your needs are the three major tenets of doing the deep work that will allow you to transform your attachment style from one of relational anxiety and into confidence and security. As you build a secure base within, you will naturally begin to make new choices around the romantic partners that you'll allow to enter into your life and you will feel empowered and discerning during the dating and attachment stages. Now, if you would like support in being secure in your relationships, if you'd like to learn how to regulate your emotions so that you feel like you're in the driver's seat of your dating life and are a rational, level-headed partner in your relationships, if you'd like to work through shame and self-doubt and second-guessing yourself in your relationships so that you can see your relational brilliance and that you have more than enough to bring to your chosen partner. If you'd like to learn how to discover and communicate your needs clearly, compassionately, and directly, so that you feel empowered in your relationship and free to express yourself, then I encourage you to apply for my three month coaching program, Recover, Restore, Reconnect. In this program, you'll recover from your breakup and begin to work through your attachment wounds, restore your sense of self-worth, and reconnect with romantic partners from your true self and from an empowered place. And yes, if that means reconnecting with your ex, if it's right, then we can navigate that together in this program. If this program calls to you, then I recommend applying for the three month commitment using the link below. Once you apply, you can go ahead and set up a consultation with me where we'll explore your wish for the program, your challenges, and if the Recover, Restore, Reconnect program is the right fit for you. Once again, you can apply using the link in the comments or uh, also the description section below this video. Now, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to watch more content on attachment theory and attachment style healing, then please subscribe to my channel. Next up is my video on the dismissive avoidant X and how to stop obsessing. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.